Dr. Baliga here. This podcast is one in a series of 10 podcasts on medical ethics and professionalism from an outstanding chapter by Dr. C. Ronald McKenzie, who is Professor of Clinical Medicine and Medical Ethics at the Wheel Medical Center of Cornell University. He was recently named the C. Ronald McKenzie Chair of Ethics and Medicine at the Hospital for Special Surgery, where he practices rheumatology, general internal medicine, and has provided perioperative care at this institution and at the New York Presbyterian Hospital for the last 30 years. By the end of the, these 10 podcasts, the listener should have a, a solid foundation in ethics and medical professionalism and reading the chapter in the book which is available at www.mastermedfacts.com should set the candidate up for excellent performance in the internal medicine board review exam. Multiple choice question. Contemporary medical ethics has developed along a number of pathways including A. Professional ethics B. Bioethics C. Virtue-based ethics D. A and B that is professional ethics and bioethics and E. All of the above We'll discuss the answer after discussing some key aspects of ethics from this outstanding chapter. Dr. Edmund Pellegrino, MD, was Distinguished Professor of Medical Ethics at Georgetown University at the Kennedy Institute at Georgetown University, said, Professional ethics, its groundings, the sources of its moral authority, and the way they are justified are of concern to all of us. It is not the whole of bioethics, to be sure, but it's through professionals that bioethics becomes a benefit or danger for every human being in a technological society. A philosophy of the profession that ground the ethics of the profession is therefore more than an idle academic exercise. Challenges of an ethical nature abound in modern day medicine. Patients, their families, those who provide medical care, and the institutions where this care is provided confront difficult choices as a matter of routine. In addition to those arising in clinical practice, important and controversial ethical concerns also arise in the arena of clinical research and in our educational practices, leaving virtually no domain of medicine untouched. Among the classical disciplines, Ethics provides a method of identifying, confronting, and resolving the morally based questions arising in the practice of medicine. Whether it is challenges arising at the beginning of life, as in the neonatal ICU, or in caring for one with Alzheimer's disease, grounding in basic ethical principles is of value to all who work in the province of medicine. In addition to their importance in resolving the dilemmas of everyday practice, they are also necessary for the formulation of the tenets underlying our sense of professionalism. This book chapter by Dr. Ronald McKenzie provides an overview of historical and philosophical underpinnings of the ethics as it relates to modern day medicine. Contemporary medical ethics Since the late 1960s, the ethics of patient care in the U.S. has developed along two relatively distinct pathways. One developed largely outside the domain of organized medicine, influenced not by physicians, but by participants with expertise grounded in other learned disciplines such as philosophy, theology, and the law, stimulated at first by the ethical dilemmas arising in human subject research the field we now know as bioethics was thrust into the public view by several historic court cases 
involving end-of-life decisions, focused on rights and principles, bioethics has influenced clinical practice through the application of bioethical theory to the difficult ethical challenges arising in patient care. Institutional ethics committees, ethics consultation and the ethics education find their origins in this sphere of medical ethics. The second pathway, that is professional ethics, orients towards the practicing physician and in contrast to rights and principles, the precepts that underlie this domain are focused on the integrity of the individual clinician, documented in the form of professional codes. The origins of this arm of medical ethics date back to antiquity with the Code of Hammurabi 2000 BC, the first known of Code of Medical Ethics, and then later Hippocratic Oath, 5th century BC, which is still pledged, usually in modified form, at medical school initiation and graduation ceremonies. However, it was not until the 18th century that the notion of medicine as a true profession was originated by two physician ethicists, the Scotsman John Gregory, 1724 to 1773, and the Englishman Thomas Percival, 1740 to 1804. Before Gregory's time, the term profession was employed by medical practitioners to distinguish themselves from surgeons, apothecaries, and other competitors, all regarded by the university trained physicians as lower order practitioners of the day. Gregory, whose writings are based on Hume's principle of sympathy, introduced an important shift in orientation away from the physician and toward the patient. Indeed, he and Percival were the first to employ the word patient rather than the term sick. In addition, Gregory's principles or code emphasized scientific and clinical competence, cautioned against physicians' self-interest, and introduced the notion of medicine as a public trust, as opposed to a merchant guild, which is what it was in his time. In his elaboration of such concepts, Percival coined the term medical ethics, introducing it in his examination of physician conduct vis-a-vis -vis hospitals, charities, and, the, and with respect to professional etiquette. Moving forward almost 50 years, the, the role that courts have played in professional discourse of medicine are underscored by noting that at the inaugural meeting of the American Medical Association in 1947, the first agenda item was the creation of a code of ethics for the new organization. Connecting their deliberations to this earlier work, the founding members of the AMA framed their code largely in the words of Percival. This decision stamped the effort with Percival's con conception of medical ethics, a professional and gentlemanly code. It was not until later that the concept of professional competence was added, largely a consequence of the expanded view of medical ethics of Richard Cabot in Boston. Nonetheless, as a result of a deeply rooted tradition, codes of ethics in the profession of medicine are touchstone statements defining the character and directing the habits of the ideal medical practitioner. This history is important because how decisions concerning clinical care are perceived and acted upon are essentially a function of which of these perspectives is held to be authoritative. As argued by Spencer, contemporary bioethics, with its emphasis on patients' rights and autonomy, requires a sharing of decision-making authority, the final power residing with the patient. In contrast, professional ethics centers on the clinician as a model agent. In an attempt to illustrate the distinctions between these views, Spencer 
presents them in the form of two contrasting questions. From the perspective of bioethics, an ethical problem is examined as a case or a clinical problem requiring a discernible response. Thus, as a result of this case-based orientation, the bioethicist would ask, what should I do and how should it be done? In contrast, from the perspective of professional ethics, the question is posed differently and takes the form of, what kind of person should I be in order to fulfill my professional obligations? Thus, when seen through the lens of professionalism, an ethical problem is a deviation from an accepted norm and it is the inattention to these norms that results in problems for the patient or the physician. Therefore, depending on which of these orientations one adopts, these contrasting perspectives may result in tensions when deciding what is right in an actual clinical situation. Ethical and Philosophical Foundations In order to understand the relevance of and the role played by ethics in daily practice of medicine, a comment about the early derivation of the word ethics is in order. Ethos and its root ethica, words from ancient Greece, are important for understanding the meaning of right and wrong. Originally, a reference to one's place of dwelling or home during the time of Aristotle, Ethos came to connote a person's interior dwelling place, an allusion to what a person carries within themselves, that is, their attitudes, orientations, and disposition to others, indeed, indeed to the world around them. Thus, ethos, as a representation of a person's inner self, essentially em embodies the core of all of one's acts. While contemporary medical ethics has been more concerned with decisions, acts, it is this deeper derivation of the word that lies closer to the subject matter of this chapter, what it means to be professional in the context of modern day medicine. As an intellectual and academic pursuit, medical ethics has looked to the field of moral philosophy for its foundation. While virtually every school of moral thought has been employed, among the most influential are those focused on netting the most overall good that is utility oriented, those based on duty or deontological approaches which are focused on the adherence of principles, not on the consequences of one's actions. Law based approaches are reference to natural laws, not the legal system, from which certain accepted rules of human conduct are derived. Contract grounded beliefs, which consider an idealized society and the notion of social contract. And more recently, feminist approaches, which emphasize values traditionally associated with women, such as caring, compassion, and nurturing. In addition to these and other philosophical frameworks, when considering the domain of medical professionalism, another approach to ethical analysis has received the most attention. Perhaps the most enduring construct of ethical thought is the virtue-based ethics of the Greek philosopher Aristotle dating to 3rd century BC. In this system, which centers on the moral agent, that is the physician, one considers the kind of person the ideal physician should be. Thus, with its focus on the physician rather than the clinical problem one is facing, virtue-based ethics provide a natural orientation to matters of medical professionalism since how professional duties, obligations and standards are acted upon are shaped directly by the character of moral agents themselves. Given the influence that virtue-based approaches have had on this discourse, a brief word about virtues would seem in order. In the context of medical professionalism, 
virtues are seen as character orientations or dispositions possessed by effective physicians that enable them to provide optimal medical care to their patients. Among the many virtues that could be regarded as necessary attributes of an effective physician, a number would appear central. First, compassion, focus, that is, focus on others, the patient. Compassion couples the regard for welfare of another with an expression of sympathy for their suffering and presupposes that an effective physician feels something of the patient's predicament while maintaining sufficient emotional detachment to allow for effective medical decision making. Discernment involves the capacity to make judgments and effective decisions on behalf of the patient without being unduly influenced by extraneous influences, considerations and the circumstances in which the patient's sickness has arisen. Trustworthiness involves a confidence and a belief that the physician will make decisions and act with competence guided by appropriate norms and standards and in response to motivations determined by moral character. Integrity A virtue particularly germane to a discussion of professionalism, the notion of integrity speaks to a soundness and reliability of moral character and requires an integration of such aspects of self as emotions, knowledge, hopes and aspirations as well as fidelity to one's moral values, consciousness referring to the motivation to do what, it's, what is right. Despite its intuitive appeal, there are problems with virtue-based approach, not the least of which is the plethora of virtues from which to choose. Multiple virtues arising from disparate traditions have been championed throughout history. Examples include the cardinal virtues of Greeks, that is wisdom, temperance, tolerance and justice the Christian virtues, which are faith, hope and charity, and there is the Hippocratic ethic, emphasizing purity and holiness. An examination of Eastern thought expands the list and thus debate invariably follows when contemplating which virtues should be regarded as preeminent. Further, even with the agreement concerning which of the virtues to honor, other questions arise. For instance, V. V. H. argues that ethical theory makes the distinction between the ethics of character and the ethics of conduct and points out that professional codes tend to focus on rules, rules which are then employed to guide conduct. However, does good character ensure good conduct? If one had to choose which would count most, finally, can virtuous conduct be taught? While there are only some of the problems arising from a virtue-based approach to medical professionalism, the notion of the virtuous physician, the one who comforts himself or herself in concert with the precepts, remains an enduring notion. Going back to our question, which is, contemporary medical ethics has developed along a number of pathways, including A, professional ethics, B, bioethics, C. Virtue-based ethics D. That is A and B and E. All of the above and the answer is D. Which is A and B that is professionalism and bioethics. Bioethics with its focus on principles, autonomy, beneficence, non-malfeasance and justice and patients' rights and professional ethics, the focus of which is the practicing physician are primarily pathways of contemporary medical ethics. Added to this is a third pathway known as organizational ethics. This is a relatively new domain of medical ethics and is focused on business aspects of healthcare. Virtue-based philosophy has significantly influenced the pathway of professional ethics but cannot be considered a defining pathway of medical ethics writ large. 
This podcast is one of a series of 10 podcasts derived from an outstanding chapter on ethics and professionalism by Dr. C. Ronald McKenzie, professor at Cornell University and rheumatologist. This chapter should provide a solid foundation to the reader interested in medical ethics and professionalism.